Hello, and welcome to this video on the overview of the topic Euclidean geometry for Grade 12, brought to you by the Answer Series. Be sure to pause at any point along the way or replay any section as you make your way through each video, making notes as you go. The topic of Euclidean geometry is allocated three weeks of teaching time according to CAPS. Note that the topic geometry forms part of Paper 2. Approximately 40 marks are allocated to this topic. This represents just more than a quarter of your exam, so it is a section that needs to be mastered fully. The structure of this video series is different to the others. It was designed for teachers. We are giving you the opportunity to use it, so that you can prepare fully for your finals at the end of the year. Because it was designed for teachers, we sometimes mention telling their learners certain things. Whenever we mention something like that, it is extremely relevant to you. So don't worry about us talking to the teachers. It will be something you need to know. There are then nine videos that follow. In each video, we will take two examples from past NSC examination papers. What follows now is a summary of what you need to think about when you read a geometry question. There are certain clue or trigger words that are critical, words that you need to pay careful attention to. A geometry problem will never give you information that you won't use, so everything they tell you about a sketch has to be used in the problem. If you see the problem contains parallel lines, think of alternate angles being equal, corresponding angles being equal, and co-interior angles being supplementary. You also need to consider triangles that might be in proportion, so that you can use the ratio and proportion theorem. And then of course, there's all the geometry from previous grades. Don't forget complementary angles which add up to 90 degrees and supplementary angles which add up to 180 degrees. The sum of the angles on a straight line is 180 degrees and the sum of the angles in a revolution is 360 degrees. Vertically opposite angles are equal. The sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees and the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite angles. And do not forget all the properties of the quadrilaterals. And then we come to circles. We have four groups. What to look out for if you are given a center, no center, a cyclic quadrilateral, or a tangent. This page is in the Grade 12 2-in-1 Math Study Guide. A useful acronym is ACT. Be active. Use the clues or triggers and recall the theory systematically. We'll look at that in more detail. Mark all the information on the diagram so that you remember to use it. Equal or parallel sides, equal angles, right angles, radii, diameters, tangents. When you see a clue, remember all the facts you know about that clue. You might want to pause the video just to check all of these. Recall all the theory you have ever learnt so that you can apply your knowledge to each geometry problem. When they talk about the centre of a circle, you need to think of many possibilities. The angle at the centre is equal to twice the angle at the circumference. You could have a diameter, in which case you have a 90 degree angle. Remember that the line from the centre to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to that chord, or the line from the center of a circle that is perpendicular to the chord bisects the chord. You could simply have an isosceles triangle, 
from two equal radii. Other geometry facts that you must remember with circles where you are not given the centre are angles in the same segment are equal, opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, and the exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. If you have two equal chords that do not form an isosceles triangle, don't forget that equal chords subtend equal angles. If they mention that a line is a tangent, there are three facts that you know. A radius or diameter is perpendicular to a tangent. If there are two tangents meeting at a point, you know that they are equal. And then you have the tan chord theorem, where you know that the angle between the tangent and a chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. When it comes to similarity, there are three ways of proving two triangles similar. The one that is used the most often is to prove that two of the angles in the triangles are equal, which means by implication that the third angle is equal. You could also prove that all three pairs of sides are in proportion, or you could prove that two pairs of sides are in proportion and the included angle is equal. So reading the words at the beginning of a geometry question is very important. As you read, stop every time you see a clue and remember all the facts you know so that you can look for them in the diagram. We hope you are feeling inspired to come to grips with this very important topic. Good luck with your journey as we work through this together. Remember, the more you practice maths, the better you become at it.